and you're welcome back to the studio. It's time to bring you that interview uh, with the minority leader. Our correspondent, parliamentary correspondent, Joseph Opokugapu, interacts with Haruna Idrisu. And he has a conversation about why he won't support anything more than 80 ministers next year and a lot more. Watch. We're doing a quick review of how the seventh parliament has functioned over the last four years. The Honourable Member of Parliament for Tamale South and also the Minority Leader, Harry Idrisu, is our guest as we have this conversation. Honourable, thanks very much for joining us. Um, to begin broadly, how have things panned out in the seventh parliament? His lifespan is coming to an end on the 6th of January 2021, from your perspective. I've always maintained that parliament is a forum where right and wrong should be debated and the conclusions must be one if we are serving the public interest that right prevails not partisanship or i have the numbers essentially parliament must reflect the needs and aspirations of the ghanaian people i believe without fear of contradiction that ghanaians in 2020 in the presidential and parliamentary election voted for an inevitable outcome of no party having a majority in parliament. For me, that is profound in many respects. It means that Ghanaians are tired of our polarization and divisions. It reflects that Ghanaians are tired of our excessive partisanship. It reflects that Ghanaians are tired that the opportunities for prosperity, the opportunities for business, the opportunity for talent and young development is shared solely to the political party in office. Ghanaians are rejecting that and have rejected that. It means that we should have one cohesive united Ghana where its opportunities are shared to all. And therefore, if you now have a parliament of 137, 137, it tells you that share the opportunities well and equally, whether NDC or MPP, if it is deserving. So we expect that going forward, without prejudice to who is declared president, for instance, I expect that whoever wins the presidency, first of all, must cut and reduce the size of government. I will not, whether as majority or minority leader, negotiate with any president on reducing the size of his government. He must, because that's what the Ghanaian people want. Why would you want to have 120 ministers of state in a small country like Ghana? Why can't you have maximum? Parliament should not support any president to bring in appointees and appointment of ministers and deputy ministers exceeding 70. So that if... 70. if um, Nanado Danko Kufadu ends up winning the slot, then we can't Why expect. Is your only Nanado Danko? Uh, President Mahama can as well win. Precisely. I mean, when you have an electoral commission uh, make a determination and a declaration in statistical error, and there are discrepancies in actual figures against percentages, of even percentages exceeding 100%, you don't rule out what the statistical advantage may be. The constitution in Article 63 and 64 is pregnant with the requirement of obtaining over 50 plus one vote of the electorate, yeah. not changes in numbers by an embarrassed uh, chairperson of the electoral commission. So that if that in decent haste. So, so that if what was it for? Yeah, you, I, I'll come to that in a while. So that if even it's President John Mahama, you wouldn't back a situation where he is bringing more than what 70, 80 yes, and, yes, uh, yes, ministers yes. and deputies. Yes, yes, I want. I want it to reflect that the Ghanaian people want a preservation of public resources and its prudent use. Yeah. And in that use, they want to see the number and the size of ministers reduced. You have to provide accommodation, provide vehicles for wheel saloon. All that counts as a cost. That can be used to take care of a pregnant woman or some uh, sick child somewhere. Yeah. So that's for President John Maha. And if it's President Akufado, you would equally not support same, any move. Same, but, same. but why would you want to tie the don't hands of the president? Don't prejudice my comment. It's president neutral, whoever becomes president of Ghana. But, but, but why would you want to tie the hands of the president in terms of 
who he would want and how many people he would want to help him get the job done. Nobody's time. Well, time is has not to be wasting public resources and on profligate expenditure. So we're not tying his hand. We're just saying that spend the taxpayers' money well and spend it prudently. You don't need that license of government to run. So that there'll be parliament doing that. And that's where the fear is coming from, that with how close the parliament figures are looking like, um, there could be the situation where uh, parliament, and for whatever, that matter, the NDC, may, may make it impossible for government to run going into the next one. Don't week. forget, I'm in parliament on my own as MP for Tamale South. My expectation, as I've advocated publicly and strongly in the last decade, is to see a reduction in the size of government, nothing more. So regardless of who is in power, that's the position I that I say you nothing more. If you have a question, <laughs> I'll be happy to answer it. Let me move on to the, the rest of it. Will the NDC have a majority in parliament before the 6th of January when this uh, you are, know, whole parliament is supposed to end are, to make way for the we are, next parliament? We are, we, are, we are profoundly optimistic that if the Electoral Commission respects the laws of Ghana, and in particular its own governing law, CI 127, Regulation 43, Christopher of the NDC warned Techima, let anybody, including you, the media, demand a public, transparent collation and aggregation of the results of Techima constituency. Polling station by polling station, certified results are certified by even the MPP, and you would know who the eventual winner of Techima is. Christopher of the NDC won. He's been robbed of that mandate and would make it conditional even to the swearing in which would take place on the 7th because that one gives us that parliamentary majority that we need. So we are standing in denial by a collusion of fraud by the Electoral Commission and the new patriotic party. They didn't win Techima. How come that they could collate and recollate Banda four times where Honorable Ahmed won in the same region, same corner, and cannot collate Techima? In any case, you are a respected media practitioner. Show me evidence of the declaration for Techima, if you have one. It is only in Nanadu, Danquest, Ghana, what the presidents were certain that a resource is declared. Political parties don't have access to the declared resource. Candidates don't have access to the declared resource. You are not seeing that as a grave threat to multi-party constitutional democracy. I worry. Tomorrow, I'll just declare Tamale South, won, Haruna. You ask me of resource, I say go to regional director, go to district director. Is that what you want? In a democracy, we play to the rules, and we must play to the rules. CI 127, Regulation 143, respect it. The Electoral Commission must respect it. The President of Ghana must respect it. All citizens must respect it. It is not acceptable. You know, they are just joking with the Chima staff, add it to their number, claim a false 137 that they don't deserve. They are 136. And we are saying that openly, do it openly, transparently. And in any case, why is the media not challenging the EC? to do what is legally appropriate. Yeah, so where is your resource? So you think that you want a Ghana tomorrow where resources are declared for a parliamentary constituency, candidates that not have access to the resources, political parties don't have access to the resources, and you people is, think it's right? It will be right tomorrow. It will be right tomorrow. Prepare for a Ghana tomorrow where anybody can sit in his house and say that I've declared results, I've won. So just to be clear, you wouldn't be part of the inauguration of Nanado Dan Kakufado if they go ahead with it once the issue of Techiman South yes, is not Yes, clear. yes. If Techiman South is not resolved amicably and satisfactorily in accordance with the laws of Ghana, and in particular with Regulation 43 of CI 127. And declared and for the more NDC. emphatically, more emphatically, coalition done openly and transparently by EC. And we been and we remain in denial that we don't have the results for Techima staff. We would be thinking through what to do on the server. Which would include not participating in the we inauguration don't of the what we do. We are you, just you referenced that earlier. Yes. You referenced that earlier yes. that yes. it's one of the we, conditions we, that you we are want, asking. We want the Chima South resolved before 7th January by all means possible. I've heard people say that 
go to court, go to court. Understand repeatedly because the EC, you know, the, 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 the EC in putting out the details uh, of um, positions in parliament and who has won how many seats, yeah. they've added Tachiman South yes. and given it to the, the NDC. Same, to, to the, the, NDC. the same EC. What is their basis for adding Tachiman South when I have no basis? to receive a resource so declared by them. Where is the resource? And you people, you must stop this uh, uninformed position. Every other day, go to court. I will go to court on something. I would only go to court when the results are given to me and I'm dissatisfied with it. In this particular matter, I've been denied the results. I don't have the results. What am I going to court with? What is between now and, and say, when they give you the results eventually? What am I going to court with? With tomatoes and uh, oranges? So, but, but my question is, what if... I say go to court with what? As you go to court and say my oranges and bananas were taken away from me, at least give me what you have collated and certified then i have a piece of document that i'm dissatisfied with then i'll go to court to challenge that i am not satisfied with this outcome we all know that there is a 21 day window within which if you want to challenge the outcome so of tomorrow, an election so so, so so no, and wait for 21 days uh, mr Deuce, the point i'm making to you is that yes. if within that 21 day period you still don't have the declared results from the ec you would let the situation go and allow no, that window no, to, no, to, to no, then slide. No, you get it. When you have a declaration and you give me a copy of that declaration, certified, legal, legitimate, and I'm not satisfied, then you can encourage me to go to court. In this particular matter, we simply don't have the results. And we cannot even demand the results from the Electoral Commission of Ghana which is governed by law, this is, this is embarrassing and legally untenable and setting a very bad and dangerous precedent for governance in Ghana that tomorrow you are told that results have been declared. Go to court. You don't even have what to walk to court with. Beyond we won't walk to the court with empty hands. Beyond the issue having to do with you know, possibly not participating in the integration as you have hinted. Will you vet Nana Rodan Kwaku for those ministers if the issue of Techiman South is not declared? Or will you see a situation where the MPP did not participate in the vetting of the ministers of John Mahama when he, uh, you know, was elected in 2012 and the MPP was challenging them? It's too early. You know, for me, 2020 presidential and parliamentary election, if you watch some of my campaign videos, it's like chasing a tortoise into a young mouse and not able to pick it. The NDC clearly had a tortoise in a young mouse that couldn't run. An unpopular president, this vote, is a vote of no confidence in Nana Akufuado from 169, struggling with one seat and desperately using brute force and force to have just one additional seat, not acceptable. It will remain a blot on the conscience of our democratic practice, the way the Chimasaf have been treated. Two lives lost, significant. You think the performance of the MPP is an indication of how they mismanage the country, which is what Ghanaians are probably paying them for, not only for the presidential, but for the parliamentary. Ghanaians, the Ghanaians will even know where, where is coming. They mismanage the COVID resources. And that is what they used to campaign instead of using it to get school children back to school. We will hold them accountable to it. We'll hold them accountable to every penny and peso I spend on COVID. We're not going to accept wholesale. I spent 260 or 1 billion. We will ask for fine detail. I think that what the Ghanaian people have voted for is for a parliament to be concerned about them as Ghanaians and not to be concerned as MPP and DC. And much will be expected of the political opposition. I trust and pray that we live up to the call. Will this parliament actually be able to work effectively going into the eight parliaments with the close margins and with all the contentious issues even regarding who may be the next speaker it, or it, deputy speaker? It, it, it should, if you recall, and you have always been on the floor of parliament, Largely, our decisions are by consensus, save when you want to 
uh, loot the state like they wanted to do in respect of uh, Ajapa. Uh, walking here, I just saw them come and loot in some mining leases when they know tomorrow parliament is rising. How my time can we thoroughly state it? How my time can we ask for due diligence? How my time can we ask for value for money? The nature of the eighth parliament is that MPs reflect about the Ghanaian in everything you do. Member of Parliament reflect about the need for value for money in perusing any loan or financial agreement brought to by government. MPs reflect soberly in any matter introduced by the executive and embarrass the executive where you have to, and we'll do exactly that. And uh, chances of, uh, you know, there's a caution that this minority has done more workouts than any minority in the history of uh, Ghana's parliamentary democracy. This parliament has uh, presented opposition to a lot more bills and all. We're likely to see that continue. And, 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 and then the, the bit about it. I think it. you should measure our work out and its outcomes. You saw even at Japan when they wanted to take away our gold royalties undeservingly. Some persons, including the ministers, sought to trivialize it as important as it is. What do you need the money for? What will you use the money for? What is the compelling justification to want a 500 million or 1 billion into 15 years when arguably you can earn 130 million on mineral royalties every other year into the next uh, 10 years without monetizing those royalties, without communities benefiting from the mineral fund investment uh, uh, account? And I think that uh, Nana Adudanko has lost the moral right, the moral strength to even talk about corruption, let alone talk about he's going to fight it. Within, within, within. So, so we can expect that kind of opposition to continue within, going within into the eight parliament. You can expect the minority. He's not, the able, he's not able to make it a high risk activity, and we are uh, grudgingly disappointed uh, about his uh, conduct on improving governance. And uh, uh, generally, I mean, if if this had happened anywhere in Europe, that would pass as a vote of no confidence on. An incumbent government. I go and check that. Which you think the Ghanaian populace eventually did? That's as far what as they, they did. Go, That's what they did. Say. And uh, we should hold together the unity and peace of uh, the country. I'm done. My, my final two. Who be the next? You know, let me put it this way. What kind of qualities are you looking for, and who should be the next Speaker of Parliament going into the eighth Parliament? Looking at the very close margins with the NDC and the NDP. Uh, uh, Speaker of Parliament, you would need somebody who is above reproach, above partisanship, familiar with the rules, have an unparalleled commitment to the good of Ghana and to the service of Ghana, and will hold the two sides together to serve the good of Ghana and not serve any parochial narrow partisan uh, interest. That is what we should look for in who the speaker would be and one who would build parliament as a responsive, transparent, accountable institution of state that will allow us to hold ministers, chief executive and other appointees accountable to the people of Ghana in the name of respecting the sovereign will of the Ghanaian uh, people. That's Michael Kui, feel that description from your perspective, Reverend Professor Michael Kui. At least after working with him over the last four years. I wouldn't make a determination of that. Uh, Professor Michael Kwe has his positive. Uh, he's contributed immensely into uh, rebuilding and improving the parliamentary service. You can't take away uh, that uh, from him. Uh, but politically neutral, it's difficult to judge him and many other speakers. So you want a speaker for this purpose of if, if parliament who is politically neutral. So just gone by is that interview with the minority leader Haruna Idrisu there and uh, of course he also made the point about the selection of a new speaker there's keen interest on who becomes in who becomes uh, the speaker uh, from next year and uh, of course several names have popped up uh, Michael Quay of course the uh, current incumbent uh, speaker of parliament uh, 
his name has come up. Also, uh, Justice Duce of the Supreme Court, his name has come up as well. And of course, a former first deputy speaker and uh, now chairman of the MPP, Freddie Blay, his name has also come up. So we wait to see how that pans out. But as you heard him say, there are a lot of uh, uh, characteristics that they will look out for in choosing a speaker. Obviously, he must be not partisan. He must be above reproach and a lot more. So in the coming days, we'll uh, see who emerges Speaker of Parliament, of the 8th Parliament.